joining us at Anthony Gold Solicitors in London and I'm here with David Smith who's one of the partners here but also David is policy director of the Residential Landlords Association and David I thought it'd be really interesting to talk to you today about what I call the, the RLA hit list. It's the things that the RLA are really focusing on uh, for 2017, your policies essentially. So, um, you know, clearly number one right up at the top there section 24 yeah ta tax 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 and tax is is, is a, a good way of summarizing summarizing our key issues um obviously things are now more complex because this will actually run through the whole year because the spring budget is no longer a spring budget it's an autumn budget so mm. we have yet yet more time to carry on um but we're, we've, we've, we've pushed on the spring budget we've done our, our our big budget submission um, go on about this and we're continuing to do research and put pressure on the government and we'll have another go for the autumn budget uh, still not, not not getting a lot of great response out of the government on this but that doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't keep trying mm -hmm. and and keep raising the points and of course as as this gets closer and closer and closer to really affecting people of course technically from April it starts to affect people Mm -hmm. um, but as uh, those the, the, the wider landlord community becomes more aware, particularly as they fill in their tax returns next year and the year after, mm -hmm. it becomes a much more live issue. Mm. And what other issues have you got in your sites at the RLA? Well, I think the biggest one that's been, been put onto us is the government's white paper. So we're working to respond to that and to think about uh, how that's going to work. The government are, are still very focused on the idea of institutional landlords. We're trying to explain to them that actually they're a very small part of the picture, albeit an important part of the picture, but the, the, the majority of landlords are smaller, uh, not institutional by any means, uh, as any stretch of the imagination, and that they need to, to, to think about all landlords and think more, more holistically about the sector. So that's mm -hmm. a huge part of our, our drive at the moment. We need to look at the changes that are going to come into force on the Housing and Planning Act. We've done a lot of work around that. Um, obviously, there's the change in, in the way that, that uh, there's going to be prosecution and enforcement, and generally speaking, if we see more enforcement, that's probably a good thing. Um, we can root out the bad landlords and get rid of them from the sector and, and, and stop having them dragging us all down. Um, but we also need to look at the other changes. We're, we're still pushing on, on this issue of whether all landlords are going to need electrical safety checks. That's mm -hmm. a, a great concern to us. We need to look at how agency fees will affect the sector. Obviously, mm -hmm. if agents aren't charging fees, then at some level, what do we care? But of course, there'll be knock-on effects because agents will need to recover that money from somewhere and that will mean that landlord's fees may go up and we need to look at that. Um, and then there's also the upcoming alteration of HMO licensing, so mm -hmm. extension of licensing and limiting of room sizes. That appears to be quietly pushed on now to the autumn rather than the spring. Mm -hmm. we'll continue to press hard on that because there are some oddnesses and inconsistencies in it. And then we're looking again at council tax and the way council tax is being banded and particularly the revaluation of HMO property. We're continuing to work quietly on that. That's a, a, a sort of longer term thing, but we're looking we're continuing to push on it. Um, a lot of work around how people understand the sector at all. There's still very poor statistics and studies of the sector mm -hmm. and that's that's one of the problems. There's too much policy is made based on on beliefs and assumptions and mm. not on proper actual facts. Mm. Um, such if, if such a thing exists, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but we're trying to, to create a bigger body of, of, of quality data. Um, and then the last big sort of thing is probably energy efficiency. Um, as we head towards 2018 and, and compulsory energy efficiency, the government's extended eco, but we're still working hard with, uh, with the government to try mm -hmm. and, and find a better mechanism um, so that landlords aren't expected to pay vast sums of money to upgrade properties. Um, that might involve some kind of tax break, it might involve something else. There's a number of different options on the table. Mm, and you have some concerns that, about um, how EPCs, how accurate they are, um, mm. and you, you, you're you looking into making them, them more accurate, aren't you? Yeah, we've been talking for a long time with, uh, with the department about uh, EPC accuracy, particularly in, in certain types of building with solid walls. So yeah. it's, it's, I've seen a, a small percentage really of the overall stock but there are certain types of building where EPCs are grossly inaccurate, um, possibly by one entire EPC grade, mm. um, which is pretty important if your property is F-rated and could be E-rated. Yeah, quite. Um, and um, we need to, to, to deal with that. And then I suppose the last big area that continues to occupy this year, which is obviously only of interest to a group of people, is, is Wales. So the Welsh Government is moving forward on renting homes Wales. Uh, for information implementation in 2018. Mm -hmm. there's, there's work going on all year 
on how that's going to, to play, out, play out. And of course, uh, on the side of that, right to rent has been pushed into Wales as well, potentially. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that it's not quite as disastrous as it appears to be here in England. Mm, indeed. Uh, just, just touching on the HMOs again, uh, David, they are in the government sites, mm. uh, I guess. Um, and, you know, it, it's quite confusing for landlords, isn't it? Because we've heard these changes are coming and you've just given us a great little gem there that they've now been pushed back to the autumn. So it's, it's almost kind of landlords are uh, uh, given these warnings and then they're kind of left in a limbo kind of situation until we, we actually know what, what's going to come down as actual statute. Yeah, the government's not announced formally that they've been pushed back. This seems to be just that, that we were previously hearing April and we're now hearing October. <laughs> so it's one of those situations where no one, no one ever says that they are or aren't appearing at any particular time. It's just that the implementation date just suddenly changes on a document and you, you mm. look at it and think, I'm sure that was a different date before. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's moved on. Um, there was quite a lot of detail and the government got a lot more submissions than they expected on the HMO stuff and some pretty detailed stuff. We had a very, very long and detailed submission on this area. Um, and in some ways I see it as a good thing that it's been moved off to October because the government's clearly thinking about what they've been told. That may well be that they don't agree with it in the end, but at least they're considering what's been put to them. And it does show that when landlords really get together and get exercised about something and put in these large numbers of submissions, it does make people think yeah. that, that the biggest problem with so many of these consultations, you get like 10 responses, two of which are, are bonkers. <laughs> um, now that another three of which come from local authorities, not particularly helpful, then you start to get to a position where how many useful, um, you know, responses have been given from the landlord community and often mm. there are just not enough. Um, but we've had a lot more over this issue. Again, there have been more over taxation, but still mm. not enough. Mm. And that, that's, that's that kind of thing that really starts to make make them stop and pay attention. Mm. Um, also, just on the, on the council tax front, you know, we have a lot of discussions on property tribes about uh, councils coming in and saying that uh, a property's got to have an individual council tax band uh, per room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is obviously local legislation and clearly councils are struggling with funds. And to me, it, it's an easy win for them to just uh, generate more, more funds uh, by, by doing this. So I think we've got to expect that this, this, this will be more of an ongoing trend. Yeah, revaluation is really difficult to deal with because everyone you speak to blames somebody else. Individual councils say, well, we're empowered to do it. If you don't like it, go and talk to the VOA, who, of mm. course, do it for us. So mm. we don't really do it. We get the VOA to do it. The yeah. VOA say, well, it's not nothing to do with us. That's, that's a political question. You need to go and talk to the DCLG. <laughs> the DCLG say, well, it's to the VOA. And you go around this little circle a few times. Um, I think the reality is it's very difficult to stop. I don't think that the government's going to be very keen to do anything that's going to undermine the ability of local authorities to, to, to take cash. Um, the reality is that local authorities and central government see landlords as wealthy and HMO landlords as particularly wealthy and therefore an easy target. Um, most of our work is, 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 is trying to focus more on consistency of behaviour as opposed to local authorities not doing it. Mm -hmm. um, we're pushing on that as well, and, and but, but what we're really, we'd really like to see is a much more consistent operation. The problem here, of course, is that the government keeps putting off the National Council tax rebounding and has just put it off again, strangely. Um, and I suspect we'll put it off yet again when it comes up next time, because it'll be just before an election, and it keeps getting pushed back so as not to antagonise large numbers of people who might otherwise vote for them. Mm. And, and to be fair, the previous government did it too, so don't, don't, don't be thinking it's just this government. All governments like to put off council tax rebounding. But there is a, in the end, it doesn't become very helpful because actually we end up in this position where some people are paying too much for council tax, other people are paying too little, and councils haven't got enough money and therefore they need to put council tax up mm -hmm. in ridiculous amounts or, or lesser amounts if they do a deal with the government allegedly. Mm -hmm. Or central taxation has to go up and perhaps we should just gra grasp the nettle and get on with it and, and value local authority, uh, local properties in local authority areas correctly. Mm. Um, obviously some people would then pay more, some people would pay less, but at least we'd be clear about what the payment was instead of constantly going around mm. in, in trying to 
fake up ways of getting more money out of it. Mm. Indeed, indeed. And I think, you know, it's very clear that landlords are um, regarded as an easy target by government. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one reason to join the uh, RLA is to add your voice to the landlord lobby, um, but also to stay informed because these changes are coming. And, you know, there's a lot of confusion. You know, landlords need to be educated. They need to align themselves with a professional trade body uh, to give them a voice at government like never before actually. Yeah it is a very tough problem actually with things like mortgage interest relief you have to go into treasury and say look you know x number of landlords have, have said they're going to and x percentage of landlords are going to increase rent which is one of the things that we were saying recently to the treasury but what we also have to say is actually this is only the tip of the iceberg because mm. most landlords don't know about it yet mm. and the treasury sort of look at us slightly baffled and they say but we thought you represented landlords mm -hmm. I'm like well we do but only the ones who know stuff mm -hmm. there's all these other ones who don't know stuff um, and yeah it, it's it's important for landlords to stay informed and it's you know, it, it's not so much the people who are watching this that I'm bothered about it's Quite. the people they know who aren't watching this yeah so don't just join for yourself nudge the people you know to get interested talk to your family talk to your friends talk to your neighbors if they're landlords they need to be looking at a website or getting themselves informed about the situation. Mm. Ignorance is not an excuse, as they say. No, indeed. Well, thank you very much for joining me as ever, David. And I think it's been really interesting to hear about the key issues that are directing RLA policy in 2017. And uh, we hope you've got value from hearing what's going on. And we'll be informing you more about the RLA's white paper uh, as and when it's available. <laughs>